Imagine living in a world where you're unable to take a summer trip to the beach because beaches no longer exist. Consider having to relocate from a place you've lived your entire life because the threat of losing everything in a flood has become a daily possibility. As polar regions around the world melt at an alarming rate, this could become more of a reality than a simple nightmare. Although the disappearance of permafrost is occasionally dismissed as having little importance in our daily lives, the effects actually hit closer to home than you may realize. As global temperatures rise and Earth's permafrost regions steadily melt, climate and uh, infrastructure across the world will encounter significant problems. I'm a science major and a person who has been fascinated by both science and climatology for as long as I can remember. I've also been privileged enough to have traveled to many parts of the world and seen firsthand the damage caused by the loss of our Arctic regions. <clears throat> the disappearance of the Arctic will have far-reaching consequences regarding an increase in greenhouse gas concentration, damage to global infrastructure, and a significant rise in sea levels. I'd first like to examine how the melting of permafrost can result in an increase in atmospheric carbon greenhouse gas levels. The loss of permafrost areas will greatly contribute to further global warming through the release of additional greenhouse gases and the elimination of a carbon sink. As the Arctic gradually melts, stores of greenhouse gases that were once trapped beneath layers of ice are released into the atmosphere. Beneath this ice, there is organic material from thousands of years of plant and animal activity. As long as this material remains frozen, decomposition and the resulting carbon gas emission does not occur. However, reduction in permafrost depth as a result of global warming is bringing these stores to the surface where microbial action is uninhibited. A 2015 article in the Nature Journal titled Climate Change and the Permafrost Carbon Feedback states that as much as 109 billion tons of carbon dioxide and methane could be released by the year 2100. As of July 2018, the National Resource Defense Council estimates this to be more than 20% of the total carbon gas emissions that have occurred since the Industrial Revolution began. Losing permafrost will also eliminate a primary greenhouse gas deterrent. Because most of the Arctic is not industrialized, there is usually little carbon-containing gas coming from the Arctic itself. As a result, plants and trees that do inhabit Earth's frozen regions account for much more carbon gas uptake than they are responsible for producing. This makes the Arctic a carbon sink, meaning that it actually takes more greenhouse gases out of the atmosphere than the Arctic emits itself. However, in 2019, NASA Earth Observatory researchers Miles Grant and Samson Riney illustrate how the loss of permafrost is causing the Arctic to now release more carbon than it is capable of reuptaking. Rather than assisting in the absorption of greenhouse gases, thawing permafrost and the resulting carbon release is effectively eliminating one of the primary greenhouse gas detractors that we have. In addition to atmospheric consequences, there are also tangible effects that arise as the result of uh, permafrost thawing. Let's take a look at the impact that the loss of such areas will have on cities around the world. The gradual thawing of ice in the Arctic will cause a significant rise in global sea levels. As the Arctic ice melts, the resulting water enters rivers and eventually oceans. Recent findings from the National Snow and Ice Data Center webpage, last updated in 2021, approximate that permafrost regions stretch over 9 million square miles. To put that into perspective, the entire United States covers only 3.8 million square miles. An observation-based constraint of permafrost loss as a function of global warming, a 2017 article published in the Nature Journal, reports that as much as 40% of Earth's permafrost is already expected to di disappear at current warming estimates. This equates to a 3.6 million square mile loss of ice, an area only slightly beneath that of the entire United States. 2021 estimates from the National Snow and Ice Data Center webpage project a four-inch rise in sea levels, enough to strain coastal cities' infrastructure and uh, exacerbate the threat of flooding. If the Arctic continues to melt at an alarming rate, it's only a matter of time before coastal cities are rendered uninhabitable. The World Wildlife Fund states that if the entire Greenland ice sheet were to melt, sea levels could rise by as much as 20 feet. This is enough to submerge island nations like the Maldives, causing the displacement of millions of people. Beach excursions would no longer be possible, and cities like Miami would cease to exist altogether. So we've just seen how the thawing of permafrost can ravage coastal cities, but now let's examine how the loss of these regions can affect other aspects of our lives. The melting of Arctic regions will cause extensive damage to existing infrastructure. When water is frozen, it actually occupies more space than its liquid counterpart. 
You've noticed this if you've ever put a soda in the frid freezer and wondered why it exploded. When the soda is frozen, the now solid particles will attempt to occupy more space but can't because of the confines of the can. The pressure builds and the can eventually explodes. The same forces that, that cause the soda to explode will wreak havoc upon our roadways and infrastructure in permafrost regions. As ice in the ground converts to liquid form, the ground supporting infrastructure will contract as the liquids attempt to occupy more space. This contraction of the ground will greatly damage our roadways and infrastructure that are in permafrost regions and require immense resources to actually repair. As of, as of 2018, the National Resource Defense Council states that Canada has already spent tens of millions repairing infrastructure in this manner and that Alaska will spend five and a half billion by the year 2100 doing the same. In conclusion, the warming of permafrost areas on Earth has many far-reaching implications besides simply losing ice in remote areas of the world. We first saw how the loss of the Arctic is affecting greenhouse gas concentration and contributing to global warming. We then looked at the more existential crisis of rising sea levels. Lastly, we examined the impact of thawing permafrost on our existing infrastructure. As global temperatures rise and Earth's permafrost steadily thaws, climate and infrastructure across the world will encounter significant problems. Although regions permanently covered in ice can often be neglected or deemed unimportant to those of us living in faraway places, they actually serve as a cornerstone upon which the modern world depends. Just as we appreciate the effect of ice in a beverage on a hot day, I hope we've all learned to appreciate what the Earth's ice does for us a bit more. Thank you.